Uh, so the next talk is uh, by Ortemir, uh, yeah, and it's me. on counterexample-driven quantifier instantiations with oh. applications to distributed protocols. Oh, glad you said that. That was long. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, it's a joint work by my colleagues, uh, Marcelo Taub, Ken McMillan, Sharon Shoam, Guy Guetta, John Owell, and uh, Molly Sagiv. Okay, so let's start. So why did we choose uh, distributed protocols? Uh, basically because they're everywhere and we like things that are everywhere. And uh, because the academia can't really find a good way to verify it by papers. So some quick examples, uh, code if you're familiar. Uh, and then we found it's not really correct. Uh, Ziziva, best paper, something that should be correct. And ah, not really. Uh, <laughs> So it, it's, it's a real problem, okay? <laughs> These are smart people, they're not like <laughs> uh, PG candidates, okay? They're really smart. And, uh, and they got it wrong. So uh, we need something better. And currently our tools, we are talking about uh, Isabel or Cork uh, or Ironfleet, they really take, it takes a really long time to prove something, okay? So... Uh, and I'm not talking even about the butterfly effects that you, that you have here in uh, Daphne. Okay, so what do we want? What is our goal? Okay, so we want this validation system. We get a system S, a, port a property fee. And we either get a counterexample or we get a proof. Okay, but uh, the problem is that uh, Rice uh, did his thing and uh, we sometimes don't know. That's a problem. So uh, what we, we do before, before that, we, we use inductive invariance. This is a standard notion of inductive invariance. I'm uh, not going really to go into that. Just saying that the inductive invariant covers all the reachable states and it's closed under transition and uh, it, uh, it can't reach a bad state, which is what we want, that everything is safe and good. Okay, so uh, we're getting there. We have in the middle these three uh, formulas that you can see. Uh, both, all, all these three formulas, just satisfying the requirements that I showed earlier. Okay? But, and here's a confession here, because I know it's, it's unpopular to say, but I really like uh, this other logic. Okay? So, <laughs> I know there are other opinions here, but uh, <laughs> here's what I say. And hopefully we'll, uh, you'll be uh, in this opinion once I'm at. I'll finish the talk. So the problem here uh, with undecidable fragments is that uh, you get this uh, quantifier alternation. Okay? La, this uh, nasty for all exists. Okay? They're everywhere. They, came from, they come from functions. They come uh, because you're uh, uh, building your uh, logic. And the problem is that once a circle comes out, the solver can uh, uh, make an infinite uh, number of uh, instantiations, and it diverges at some points. OK. So this is our elephant in the room, OK? Uh, this uh, quantifier uh, alternations. So what did we do in this uh, decidable logic before? We said, well, maybe we're not smart enough. Maybe we can write our model in a way that this circle doesn't exist. And sometimes you can, OK? We, uh, and we also tried modularity. We broke the system to several pieces. And then, uh, hopefully, uh, every piece is in a decidable uh, fragment, and then you're good, OK? But sometimes it's not enough. And what we're showing in this work that we're adding relational abstraction. And in the case that it doesn't help, we need uh, some manual instantiations. OK, so I'll walk through uh, at least a two example so you can see what I'm talking about. So say we have these uh, uh, N uh, participants, and we want uh, to decide a value, okay? And we're sending values from uh, one to another. 
and uh, we can send the value that we got, we can send our, uh, our initial value, and uh, we, if uh, there is a quorum of a voted uh, value, then we are saying that this value is decided. Okay, a really simple consensus algorithm, um, but not that simple, apparently. Okay, we would like to, of course, uh, prove that only one value is decided. Okay, so even in this simple protocol, we have this notion of quorums. And quorums, uh, by themselves, uh, you need cardinality, uh, you need stuff that uh, takes you away from uh, your desirable fragment, okay? So what do we do? We axiomatize things in a first order logic, okay? So instead of saying that uh, we need a quorum to be more than half, we're saying that every two quorums intersect, okay? And that's enough, apparently. So this is how you write it in Ivy, but what, what, what you need to know is this, that we have this uh, property that at the end ensures us that every two quorums intersect. Okay. And we're keeping uh, away all this uh, arithmetic and cardinality away. Okay, so uh, here's our initial state. Uh, no one is voted to, uh, to anything. And no, no one decided anything. And we have this property. And a node can cast a vote. Okay, very trivial so far. And a vote is decided if there is a supporting quorum. Okay. And this is our safety property. Okay, so uh, here I'm going to supply the inductive invariant, which is fairly simple. We have the safety property, of course. We have that we can't uh, decide the, the non-value, this one. And we have that every decided value is supported by a quorum of nodes. Okay. So uh, we're starting... Uh, the verification uh, process, and what we see is that we're getting an edge because there is a vote function for the node, from the node type to the value type. Then we're getting another green edge uh, from the value type to the set type because of this for all exist here. And lastly, we're getting another edge uh, here for, from this for all exist. And that's a problem because we are no longer in a decidable fragment. Okay, so what do we do? Abstracting, okay? We're taking uh, a function, for instance, uh, this for all exists, uh, the property just, j that I just showed you, okay? And we are uh, making it a relation, okay? Our intersection, okay? And I'll show you how it's done. And uh, this function uh, comes out of scolumization. And uh, we're doing the abstraction uh, to a relation. Here you see it's no longer a function. And now in the decide function, when we did the decide action, when we're trying to verify it, we see that things broke. <laughs> and the problem is that we forgot uh, that uh, this function is total. Okay, so now, we get something that is really bizarre. We get an empty quorum, a quorum that has no nodes in it. And apparently, this quorum can support any decision because uh, no, every node in it voted to any value that we want because no node is in, in this quorum. Okay. So this is why we need instantiations. Okay, so uh, what we need is a specific node Okay, in our proof to show that the previous example cannot happen. It's not real. So this is how we do it, okay, at least uh, uh, on the slides. We're starting with uh, a violated safety, uh, assuming that we have two values that were decided are not the same. And then we're working uh, with the proof uh, of the solver. And we see that uh, uh, the solvers commonalize uh, this function, okay? The, the property that we have a supporting quorum uh, for every decided value, okay? 
Then we would like to say, all right, intersect these two chromes, okay, because we know that every two chromes intersect. The solver doesn't know, but we do, okay? So we then instantiate uh, our uh, total axiom here on these two chromes. And we're, get, we're getting another node, N0, that belongs to these two chromes. And by that, we're getting our contradiction because this node voted uh, to two different values. Okay? Okay, so here, uh, lots of data, but what I want to focus on is these two columns. Uh, we tried our technique on many protocols. Some of them uh, the uh, PBFT variants went uh, extracted into C++ code. And uh, what I wanted to show you that we don't really need lots of instantiations, okay? Uh, most of our inductive checks run without anything. They're just passing through, and the solver uh, is doing all the proof work for us. So uh, that's, a good, that's good news, at least we think that. And I would like to conclude. So our approach is, pre is predictable. We don't have any butterfly effects. Okay, and once you proved something, it stays proved. And it's sound, which is uh, important. And another surprise is that actually first order logic complete. So anything that you can prove in first order logic, we can prove by adding more and more instantiations if needed. And the last, which I don't think it's a word yet, but it should be, progressibility. This means that the user can always take a step forward to complete the proof. Uh, previous techniques didn't know why, if you can't break the module to, uh, the, your model to separate uh, modules, then wh what should you do, try harder? Maybe. If you can't rewrite, what, you're left with, I don't know, maybe you're not smart enough, but you, you have no solution. Here you can always take a step forward to complete the proof. And you guarantee that if you can prove it in first order logic, you'll be able to do it here too. All right. So on this graph uh, of uh, automation versus expressiveness, we are somewhere here. We are less expressiveness, uh, expressive than uh, proof assistance, but we are far more automated. And we need less proof uh, lines to the same extracted code. Okay, so this is what I have for you for today. Excellent, thank you. Um, are there any questions? We have time for a couple, I think. Hi. Hi. Very interesting uh, that your kind of reducing the burden of um, kind of infinite quantified instantiation mm -hmm. by guiding it using count examples. I was very interested in the completeness. How does it manifest in the presence of theories? So we didn't prove that uh, it's complete uh, with uh, theories, but I can tell you that we did interact with theories in our proof for, uh, because you need it. You need it, uh, sometimes you need array theory, sometimes you need other stuff. Yeah. Uh, but if uh, your theory is encoded in first order logic, you still uh, get your completeness. But then your instantiation might blow up, right? Even though in the count example guided one, because see, if I just needed 14,000 something, right? Uh, instantiation may not find it, but yeah, so, uh, so maybe just solving it or using some decision procedure. So um, is that something that is yeah. possible? Uh, yeah, completeness so in the presence of interfacing with the SMT or something. So I can tell you, for instance, we have a, we did an example with a, a, when you take an array and you shift it, okay, and something like something, and it's not uh, bounded by how many. And we did manage to prove it with instantiation. You did need more invariance, okay, and uh, that's true. It's not uh, it wasn't easy work, but it was done. I see, okay. Yeah, I can show you that uh, offline. Cool. Thank yeah. you. Okay, um, uh, maybe let's, let's uh, change over. I, I have one more question, maybe yeah, whether you can answer as, you, uh, yeah, as yeah. we switch over. Yeah. Um, so I was thinking a little bit about uh, like the user perspective on mm -hmm. this methodology, right? Yeah. Um, as a user, uh, is it, are there guidelines that can help you tell, you know, uh, 
which instantiation you need to do next, or if you're maybe bumping up a more fundamental issue like uh, mm -hmm. your 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 formulation is is incomplete, or or you're going past FOL. Yeah. So okay. So uh, what you can do uh, usually, uh, and I didn't know, I did not talk about it, but uh, we're using finite model checker uh, to check your FOL formulation is correct, your inductive invariant is correct. So if you're in this point that you know that uh, your environment is indeed inductive, or if you suspect it's inductive, okay, uh, then, uh, then your counterexamples are always because you forgot about some uh, totality axiom. Okay? So at least that. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay? So uh, yeah, it, it, something that uh, you get a feeling when you're seeing lots of counterexamples and uh, Usually you just see it and you, yeah, you know what, what's missing. You're like, yeah, 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 this, this bogus uh, element is missing. Right. Yeah. All right, thank you. Uh, let's thank the speaker again.